Hello, this is Mike Farley. We're in Westlake, Texas today. We're going to talk about piers. There's two reasons to do piers. Okay, the first reason is because there's fill dirt. Okay, now how can we know if there's fill dirt or not? Well, if we have existing trees, existing trees are on existing grade. So I am standing on a tree stump right here. This was obviously existing grade, including the briars right here that are trying to shred me and tear me apart. So that was part of the ground here to begin with. So we can see what existing grade was and what kind of slope we had, because here's some more trees and briars to tear me apart. And you can see kind of how the slope of the grade was. So you can follow that towards the house and you can look at it and say, wait, the house is a lot higher. Okay, why is the house higher? Well, because they brought dirt in. When they bring dirt in, it's called fill dirt. Fill dirt has the stability of uh, marshmallows, none at all. Okay, so if we come in and we build the pool up here and the shallow end comes down to here, we still have all this fill dirt that we're sitting on. So the pool settles, it breaks in two, and it makes a catastrophe. And now we have an awesome remodel to do later. So that's why we don't do that. We come in where there's fill dirt and we put piers. Piers are concrete stilts drilled into the ground that go down into the original soil and then it supports the pool which is floating basically up in the air in this fill dirt marshmallow stuff. Okay, so what we've got is all this is fill dirt. So you can see here, if I climb up the mountain of fill dirt, You can see how easily it moves. You don't want to build anything on top of this. Okay, so these orange spots, columns, are where we're going to come in. And they just unloaded the drill. They're going to take this drill and they're going to drill down into the ground. Okay, and make these big openings so we can then pour concrete, put steel into it, and that all supports it. So these stilts are basically all the way around the pool. So we've got one here, another here, 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 here. Uh, we've got several over here that support the spa, which is here, and here, and here. So to get a truck in, we have to be able to do this before we dig the hole. Because if we dig a hole, we can't come in and drill a pier out there. It's too difficult. The truck's got to sit on something to be able to drill down. So the hard thing to know is sometimes is there fill dirt or is there not fill dirt? You know after you finish the dig of the pool, but in this case, we know definitely, wow, we have a mountain of fill dirt here. Okay, you can look at the trees are all lower down there, the house is up higher, so we have to do piers on this. Now, a lot of times people are all like, well, we didn't pier the house. Well, as you go up the hillside, maybe the house is on original grade and so it doesn't have a problem. But when we push into the backyard, they lifted it up and so we're in fill dirt. So the house might not be peered and we may have to peer the pool still. So uh, that's the two re one of the two reasons to peer a pool. The other is because the soil is so nasty and it moves up and down, we have to do what's called piers and void boxes. And we'll show you what that looks like too on a different job site down in Cedar Hill where we have the nastiest soil in the United States uh, as far as clay from expansion to contraction. Uh, on this particular project, from wet to dry, it moves nine inches, okay, which is huge if you're trying to build something on top of that. In fact, in soils class in college, it says put cows there, only cows, maybe sheep too, just livestock. Okay, so uh, they're going to come back and we'll show you how this is going to be drilled and poured here in a little bit. So, uh, one question that was just asked, which is an excellent question, are these all the same size? So this is a 12 inch wide drill. Uh, the bigger it is, the more friction the pier creates, therefore uh, the more resistance to keep it in place. So because we don't have bad soil here, and we just need to drill down until we get into the original grade, a 12 inch pier works fine. Sometimes we do 18s, uh, sometimes they have to have what's called a bell on the bottom. They're all different. Uh, the engineer comes up with the recommendations on the size and the type that we're gonna use. And when we hit water, we have to do what's called casing it. 
uh, so the cost goes up dramatically. But here on this particular hillside, we're not near water, we shouldn't have an issue. To set the proper elevations, they set up a level which is sitting over by the truck, and then they measure down from that to get the top of where the pier is going to be at. That'll be where the pool sits on top. So we dig a hole. All you'll see are the tops of these piers because they're based on the level down uh, from the, the, the measurements that they're taking. 